waking up without a smile on my face every day is is kind of hard to do. Not too many people get the opportunity to do what I do and live out their dreams. That's beautiful. Wow. Thank you. I'm Carisha Swanson with House Beautiful and we're building the dream in Colorado. Right now, we are in my design studio, which is located in Grays Lake, Illinois. It's a far northern suburb of Chicago. My design story, or my journey into interior design, is somewhat funny. I started off in high-end residential property management, and my boss gave me a little bit of time off for a mental break to redesign our two-bedroom model. The model was actually entered and nominated for an award in the Chicagoland area, and I made a bet with a coworker that the model home won, I would quit my very well-paid job in residential property management and pursue a career in interior design full-time and the rest is history. I feel that everybody, including myself, should be surrounded by things that you love. So I am taking over the boomer suite. I get, I feel like I got the, the, a big challenge ahead of me. It's a series of four spaces, a kitchen, a hearth room, an outdoor space, and a bedroom. So I have my work cut out for me, but I'm overall excited about it. How I have taken on this project is, I'm, I have this house. My parents are aging, they're getting older. I need a place that is separate, but yet together for my mom and dad. And I want a suite for them that's private enough so they can enjoy their lives and they can enjoy maybe their retirement years, but yet stylish enough to be connected to my house. You know, I'm really, really honing in on that Old West feel, but also adding those doses of the modern 90s in there. So overall, I have a very, very eclectic design idea and a design plan that I'm hoping goes off without a hitch in this home. I was basically inspired by Colorado itself. Overall, you know, I was definitely inspired by the Western theme. Um, I wanted to take it a step further by really, really featuring black cowboys. I found and reached out to a lot of black artists who also contributed pieces. For the outside, I wanted to do a facade over the fireplace to really, really hone in on the metalwork that you might see like in an old West theme and then really bring in some of the current shapes and motifs like hexagons and things like that. So I really, really worked closely with Architectural Grill to come up with some beautiful chair rail patterns and a facade over the exterior fireplace. You know, I really, really wanted to bring some touches of the indoors out. So I have basic things like a bookshelf normally that you would see indoors. We have the cushions, a little dining area, tons of greenery out there. And then when you come inside, that's where you're gonna be hit with that pink and that blush tone. And then it's gonna be reeled back in with masculine fabrics and uses of charcoal in the doors and in the hardware. Um, for the fabrics, I reached for Fabricut. They actually provided about 90% to 95% of the fabrics that you see in the house. Going into the master bedroom suite, I also used Fabricut for the drapery in there, and it just complemented so well the Philip Jeffries wallpaper that we have on the main wall, as well as the Philip Jeffries treatments that we have on the ceiling. So overall, I'm hoping that this turns into a boomer suite that my parents will want to live in when they retire. Tiffany's right. I gave her a huge project. I mean, basically an apartment attached to this house, but I know she can handle it and I'm already excited by some of her amazing ideas. While she's doing all of that work, we're gonna head over and check out Made Goods, one of my favorite showrooms. Hi, House Beautiful. Welcome to Made Goods. Uh, and this is our outdoor area. Um, and one of the things Tiffany really loved about this is it's really an eclectic and it looks like a curated uh, assortment that she could choose from. So Tiffany used a couple of these little side tables. Um, you can use them as a side table or a stool in the room. 
to bring in that sculptural element. Here's two of the chairs that Tiffany used. This is our Aurora dining chair. Uh, I think this is a beautiful piece because it's a sculptural wing chair, but it's scaled down for dining size. This is the Ithaca chair. Um, she really wanted the, the room to look textural, um, and this chair has a great mix of iron as well as a teak seat. Uh, Tiffany also used a pair of these, the Alistair uh, pedestal in the room. Um, it's a great architectural element. Here we're using it to support artwork, but it also makes great planters or you could put some dried arrangements on it as well. And Tiffany used three of our Tamsi planters. Uh, I love that she did three of these. They're really sculptural, fun pieces. Uh, this is made out of cast stone and metal. Uh, it makes a really great planter, a little more of an unusual piece that really goes to the um, curated feel that she wanted for the room. Thanks for coming to visit us at the Made Good Showroom and we're really excited to see Tiffany's uh, use of our pieces and the design of the whole home project uh, for House Beautiful. I was supposed to be traveling to Denver to see the house for the very first time, but we have so many delays. I am ending up having to push the trip back out a month. I know that I'm struggling and everything seems to be falling in, but it is going to be so worth it, so worth it in the end. So Tiffany, I'm so glad you finally made it here from Chicago. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Designing this entire suite. Yeah. Full apartment, virtually. It was hard, <laughs> but okay. The thing is, is like, you're on the plane, you're yeah. on the plane, just freaking out. You're freaking out the day before, the week before, and then you get in and then you're like, okay. Tell me a little bit about what you envisioned when you thought of the person or the people living here. So, okay, so my direction changed like three times. <laughs> At first, I wanted to do this Old West theme, and then I went to, where would my parents live if they're a little bit cooler? Yes. So I kind of went for a 90s vibe, because that was the color story that I was going for. Yeah. You know, I really wanted this if the 90s were done correctly. I wanted the <laughs> correct mob on the ceiling. <laughs> One of my absolute favorite functions in this space is this little moment yeah. with this dining area that was, you know, where else would we have put it? But it offers a lot of storage too. So right. it's really hardworking, but it's hidden. Yeah. 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 And then in this room, you kept it neutral. Yes. But then when you turn into the bedroom. Oh God, the bedroom. <laughs> yes. The bedroom is a totally different. I just kind of swung the pendulum. Yeah. Directly the other way. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you have it very, very soft and then you hit this forest green. And then one of the last spaces that you have in here is an actual outdoor space connected to this entire suite yeah. that's just the people that live here. Like, it's amazing. And you know what? Using parents as a muse, yes. it <laughs> helps because you're able to make a lot of decisions. <laughs> of all the things in this space that you are doing, what is the one you're most excited about? The kitchen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to tell you a secret. I designed and drew the kitchen in a day. The materials landed in my lap. Everything, the stars were aligned. I don't believe you. <laughs> How do you what do you mean you designed it in a day? <laughs> from the elevations, I, everything was picked out except for the hardware. From the elevations to the backsplash, the countertop material. It was a day. It just, it, it, it just happened. And that's rare in designer brain. I can't wait to see this completely done. Me neither. <laughs> Just so you know, that's how nervous I am. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair. It turns out Tiffany had a good reason to be nervous. I'm glad she got that kitchen figured out early. We were able to get the Caesar Stone countertops put in, the LK faucets and the circle lighting. But that is only a percentage of all the work that she needs to get done to complete this entire suite. So while she's working on all that, we're heading over to Mr. Brown London. We're at Mr. Brown London. Come on in. 
So Mr. Brown London's aesthetic is really to be a contemporary yet mid-century modern furniture line. And we focus a lot on textures and product finishes more so than a actual colorway. They can range anywhere from accessories and lighting to full-on case goods such as cabinets and desks, as well as a full upholstery line. We use wood um, framing for all carcasses and then we layer those with the faux chagrin or the gesso. In some cases we actually use a brass clad alloy Tiffany Brooks has been a client of ours for over two years. She has chosen an Albanini bed. For the Albanini bed, we actually have a wooden frame, which is used as the carcass. And then there are tooling marks that are etched into the wood. On top of that, we then add a brass clad alloy. And then that is hammered to the frame to take on the markings that the wood have taken on from the tooling. Making the Albanini bed, the frame typically will take about 14 weeks from start to finish. And then with the upholstery process, as long as the fabric is in stock, it typically can only take a couple of days. The Albanini bed from Mr. Brown that Tiffany has chosen is a canopy version. So it's a four poster bed, but it's not machine cut. And every client really does get a unique one of a kind piece. Well, today is day one of the install. I'm still in the freak out mode. We're only about 20% done, still unloading things off the truck. We have a ton of stuff to do. All in all, I have my fingers crossed about the results for today. <laughs> We have a big, big, big problem in the shape of a sofa, a missing TV cabinet, and two nightstands. And apparently my furniture is in Texas somewhere and I'm standing in Colorado. I don't know if I'll get it in time, but what can you do? Except for wait for your furniture to be in Colorado. We know where all the furniture is going. That's kind of like the one and done. But all the accessories and all the pieces of art, we overbuy to figure out what feels best in the space when we get in the space. So when I think through a piece of art, I'm looking for color, I'm looking for pattern on pattern play, I'm looking to see what overall feels good in the space. It's just kind of like a gut punch. You know when you have the correct piece of art in the space. It was really, really important to me to put a cultural stamp also on the entire project. Thank God. Carisha just called me to let me know that the rest of my furniture had arrived safely. I am so thankful right now. I was definitely freaking out. You were not able to come and complete your space when you were there the last time. Some of your furniture didn't show up. All of my custom pieces were furn of furniture were sitting on a truck in North Carolina for 30 days. I had to threaten people. It got, it got real. You had to fill up this whole space and you said that you wanted to do it with the theme of if the 90s were done right. Please elaborate. Yeah. So my parents lived in a very, very, very 90s house. There were some good moments, like the mob was a very good moment, but it was just done all wrong. So I took the spirit of my parents, because that's who I designed this for, if they were able to live a little bit more stylishly. So hopefully, look, I'm going to find out. <laughs> hopefully I did a good job. <laughs> so I am going to show you some. Okay. <laughs> The 
great room that you created and I, I love it. I love it. I think it's badass. <laughs> it's so cute. Yes. Yes to everything that's happening right now in front of me visually. One of the biggest factors that stood out to me was the amount of storage that was not there. And the fact that they didn't have like a dining coffee area because that's what parents do. So I felt that bringing in a space, that little banquet area and adding the storage underneath it was key. So that was actually the very, very, very first thing I drew. I found those chairs, they were totally vintage. I found them on Craigslist. We had them recovered. They screamed the era that I was going for. Fully taken the kitchen that you created here. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's such a good kitchen. This is a this is a very very hardworking kitchen. That, that backsplash with the cabinets with the cabinets, and that yummy wallpaper again, and that splash of pink is just. It's just, I feel like it's to die for. I, I absolutely am in love, 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 love with this kitchen. The appliances that you, you use here, which are a signature kitchen suite, you know, when you're talking about a small space, it can be really hard to get the function that you need to out of things. And that refrigerator actually has a convertible drawer kitchen areas are all about function. So when selecting these appliances, you needed things that could do a quick change in a hurry. Anything that has two tricks or can do more than one thing is what I would always reach for in a small space. Okay, so while this room has this like relaxed sensibility, that yes. is not necessarily what you did for the bedroom. This is like a shock to the system in the best way. <laughs> <laughs> Like, forget neutrals, forget mob. We went in a totally different yep. direction here. So you took this Philip Jeffries wallpaper that's on the back there. The wallpaper was just, it just hit me over the head. There are some tips and tricks to successfully combine wallpaper and paint. When you're picking out a wallpaper, check to see how easily it can be removed because a lot of people are totally fearful of wallpaper and I will let you know that through the years, through the decades, wallpaper has gotten easier and easier to be either replaced or removed. And don't be so fearful. Don't reach for the obvious. You can add some texture with wallpaper. You can go in a totally different direction that your neighbor would not, like I did with that watercolor. And just try to play up your personality when you're picking out paints and patterns for wallpaper. So once I found that wallpaper, it wrote the rest of my story. The, te the story in here is all about texture. I added texture on the ceiling and then the curtains to do that sheer with that over dyed, that tea stain look. Mm -hmm. It just, it just felt, I just sent it over the edge, I feel like. Okay, so we have to move on from here. And are you ready to go to the outdoor space? Here is a fully realized and super special outdoor space that you created top to bottom. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. And I had fun doing it, you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but you also created this, this like artful element with architectural grill. I really, really wanted some type of three-dimensional art in the space. We came up with this beautiful, totally random pattern that just worked so amazingly beautiful with this fireplace. I'm kind of like sitting on my hands right now, so excited. So when people enter this space, when your parents enter this space, <laughs> what is it that you want them to feel? And do you feel like you hit that successfully? When you're entering that space, I do want the overall feeling to be a throwback, but well thought out for future living. 